I had drawn as an antagonist the evil stepmother, Griselda. And her weapon is a chicken. <laughs> as a protagonist, I had drawn the evil sorceress, Lilith. She apparently makes more than one appearance today. And her weapon is cunning. The plot device, the plot element is to steal a valuable treasure. So, there it came to be in the land of Illyria, high in the Thang Mountains, that Lilith, the sorceress, accounted of great power, sat in her castle. And evil too was she counted. It was said that she was that same Lilith who came before Eve, the mother of us all. It is said by some, and I recount only what others have said. I do not instruct contrary to the teachings of the priest. So let it not be said that I have. <laughs> she, you see, was created for Adam as his mate, as his helpmate in life, as his wife. But she would not have it so. My Lord God, you have created me, and I would not be subject to the will of another. Do not place me here beneath the hand of this Adam, this strange being. And so she fled from his sight, from the sight of all of God's angels. And like those others who came early on, it was given to her to live many years beyond the first generations, so that there were mothers, so that the institution of marriage were to come about. And there were, indeed, stepmothers. One such, by the name of Griselda, came to be, and tales of this Lilith, who lived high up in the mountain passes, came to her ears. And it was said that Lilith, possessed of great power, of knowledge and wisdom garnered through long, hard years of life, had a treasure, the most valuable treasure, that was to be found in these lands. Whether one were to look on the earth or beneath it, out in the sea, Lilith, it was said, was possessed of the most valued treasure of all. And Griselda, tired of the abuses of her husband, tired of the incessant mewlings of his children from some other wife, intended that that treasure should be hers. So she inquired, she studied, and she learned where Lilith lived. She put on stout boots, pulled about her a heavy cloak against the weather, and made her way up into the mountains. Now, to keep a story from getting too long and tedious, I will tell you that many were the ploys that she brought to bear. In many different ways, she sought to entrap the sorceress Lilith, safe there in her keep in the mountains. And all but one of them failed. It was her last attempt which finally brought her success. Because once you have success, why try again? <laughs> she caught a wild chicken in the mountains. Griselda brought that chicken up to the walls of the keep. And there, Though you and I would not understand it, it is a thing beyond the fathoming of those not directly involved. She plucked every feather from the chicken and began to strangle it so that it let out such a noise. 
such a simple ploy, finally drew Lilith forth from her gates. What a horrid noise! This, this squealing and squawking! What could it possibly be? Damn annoying! She threw open the gates, jumped outside, livid, red from head to toe, ready to strike down whoever or whatever beast should be making such a noise and disturbing her sleep in the dead of night. As the gates were pulled forth, and Lily stepped out from fast, hard against the wall, to the side, leaps Griselda with a large sack, a gunny sack sewn with silver thread, silver, that purest and most pristine of metals, proof against many magics, they say, and in that sack, she caught Lilith. She took her up, threw her over her shoulder, and went into the nearest shelter, Lilith's own castle. And in the great hall, Griselda took a stick and began to beat the writhing form within the sack. Tell me where your treasure is! Tell me your secrets! I am told that you have the most valuable prize ever and you must give it to me! And from within the sack, amidst the grunts and groans, came peals of silvery laughter. What? What is it? Why do you mock me? And Griselda began to kick. Griselda took the plucked chicken, threw it into the sack, and shook. <laughs> she tried everything. And for her troubles, gained naught but more silvery peals of laughter from the supposed sorceress. And at last, Lily says, Lilith says, I will take pity on you, you horrid, evil woman. Let off with your pitiful beatings, with your mulings and squawkings, and I will tell you what you will never have my greatest treasure. No, no, tell me now. But when she saw that all her efforts were in vain, finally, Griselda, panting, wearied, angry, flustered, impatient, and defeated, lets go the mouth of the sack, lets the cloth drop to the ground, as Lilith stands, battered and bruised for sure, but still proud. Foolish, foolish girl. They say that I am a great sorceress. I have merely lived long since near the beginning of this God's world. So surely, I have learned many things. I have known the animals of old, the plants that God planted on this earth, and many of the men and women, including your Adam, the father of all other humanity. But with, these, with this knowledge is simply a knowledge of the way things are. No great spells, no great godlike or angelic or demonic powers. The treasure that I have had, the treasure that I have always had, would not be bound in a sack. For when God set me here to be Adam's mate and subject, the thing that I took then, the thing that all men value, is freedom. So saying, she caught Griselda herself up in the sack, bound the mouth round with a stout rope, heaved it out the gate, over the cliffs. 
and shut her gates. The greatest, most valued prize of all, I will keep. <laughs>